participate in in planning for the for the uh, future of the community and and for the future of Keene State, and they 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 really were, were looking forward to that. Uh, the the Keene State every year does an orientation. Uh, I I speak each year at the, at the freshman orientation, but each year Keene State is involved in an orientation for the for students coming coming back to school for students ent entering the, the freshman class. For the opportunity to incorporate this as part of that orientation mm -hmm. because their citizenship, the, for many of those students, this is the first time they've, they've been away from home. They, they, are, they come from families that, that are really uh, first time students in, in their family. And their participation as part of the community is a part of what they're learning. Sure. You know, I think the school motto is, you know, ent ent enter to learn and, and go, go, forth go, go forth to serve. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that that is really something that, that we all take fairly seriously. And, and the entire city, in a way, is, is part of the Keene State campus with, with students living th all throughout the city. So that they're, they're the, you know, as they as they learn their own responsibilities, as they learn their citizenship, I think it's incredibly important. And and as the community adjusts, always remember, you know, we have we live in a state with an aging population. We live in a region with an aging population. A lot of the vitality, a lot of the energy, a lot of the new ideas will come from Keene State students. They, they lower our average age by, by quite a bit, mm -hmm. and, and they, they serve an incredibly valuable function with, with, within the community so, so that our ability to incorporate them in, in, into, into that process is, is extremely important. So, so the, you know, the suggestions that we got at, at, the, uh, at the forum for, for incorporating students, you know, from the early earliest time that, that they're at Keene State within the community and and introduce students to the community and introduce the community to the students, you know, I think is extremely important. One of the things that I, I like is that um, one of the things that came out of it is that you're talking about struggles with landlords and you're talking about creating, you know, creating um, ways that students have a hotline for, for issues. That was one of the things that came out of it. I also like that the city, about a few years ago, started a process where landlords, landlords could voluntarily go through an inspection so that if parents are really looking, and being one, and I talked about this last night on the TV, uh, my daughter graduated from Hobart William Smith last year, and she lived in the house on campus. And you know, as a parent, you sign off on this paperwork, and then you go and look at the house after the fact, and they don't have a listing, but if I don't know if Keene State has this, but if you're voluntarily having an inspection, it, does that make you, when parents are, are looking for off-campus housing, do they have a way through the Keene State to be able to find some, you know, say, oh, that's a safer house for my daughter to go into because it's already been, it's on the list of inspected. I would have loved to have that at Hobar <laughs> because I had to get on my knees every night and, and pray that everything was going to be okay because the house was just not what it should be. But is, th is that something that you are all talking, is that, that, that's something that's coming out? Yeah, so any landlord that goes through that process gets listed uh, mm -hmm. with the college. And so it is a way for st our students in particular and their families to know that that's a, that's a home that has met the city's standard. That's, I think that's a great thing, too. Do you, what do you think about the, the housing that's, been, that's going up? Is that going to change the dynamic of the neighborhood? I mean, are, are students going to, if that continues, and, and they build out Arcadia, which is on, on um, Emerald Street, and, um, and some of the other housings that, that have gone up, does that pull some of the out of the neighborhood? Is that, is that, and even as a mayor, is your perspective, does that start the uh, evolution of, of single uh, first-time home buyers going back into those areas? And, and that, what do you think? Well, it hasn't, hasn't started it so much yet, but, but cer certainly it relieves some of the pressure. Mm -hmm. It relieves some, some of the pressure for, for expanding student housing in, into uh, you know, more of the uh, multifamily housing within the community, so, 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 and it relieves some of the pressure on, on rents. So it certainly has a, has a very positive impact on that. Mm -hmm. As more of it is built, as 
you know, and, and that's something that, that we have talked about. There, there are areas where, where perhaps more private uh, student housing could be built that uh, that will ultimately have an impact. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that the city's been involved in is looking at, at land use along the Marble Street corridor. And there are some areas there that, that we think would, would be, you know, prime and would be appropriate for moving back into workforce housing uh, that to try to try to encourage those people that, that, that work in, in, in some of the companies in Keene to, to actually have housing in Keene that, that, that they could afford. Do you, uh, pres I was going to add, yeah. President Hewitt, now I'd heard an interview you had done with uh, Tom Novak for here, and we were, he was talking, asking you a few questions, and you had mentioned um, the need for more housing on campus. Now, is that something that is in the works? Um, another dorm or something similar or something like the owl's nest is that it is that is that something on the horizon it is on the horizon we are actively conducting a residential life master plan mm -hmm. to take a look at uh, the use of our land so, and the owl's nest is a great example where uh, there's a lot of land there but the style of the owl's nest mm -hmm. doesn't lend itself to uh, the kind of living uh, mm -hmm. environment that we would like for our students. So part of our plan is to take the Owl's Nest down, uh, which was temporary housing which in is, the 70s. It, yeah, it was. I know, it and was. it's funny, when yeah. I went to Keene State, those were actually the coolest places. Um, <laughs> if you had a... Even though they were 10 days, you're right. It, it, it was, those were the places you wanted to live, but yeah. um, getting beyond that. So there is actually a, an active uh, campaign to, to get some more housing on campus, and is it the idea to remove the Owl's Nest and put buildings there in that area? Is that kind of the idea? That's part of the plan and the other part of the plan is where Bushnell and Tisdale are which are um, were originally married student housing mm -hmm. to uh, put some more state-of-the-art residential buildings there. Um, we're actually hoping to put a shovel in the ground next summer for one of those to wow. take one of those down and put a new one up. And I know you had also mentioned uh, housing locations off campus and the Marlboro Street corridor is probably a, a prime example is that is that something too that that you're looking at and in, in working in collaboration with the city to to build you know quality off-campus housing to alleviate some of the the issues in, in in the ward there yeah we're very interested in public-private partnerships mm -hmm. uh, and part of the uh, part of the effort uh, for this commission that the mayor and I are, are uh, embarking on is to do exactly that plan together uh, yeah. for the future oh sorry go ahead Chris so uh, I want to just veer in a different direction because it frustrates me being being one that that is from Keene State College that all too often we're stereotyping the kids down there and there's a lot of magic that, that goes on there. There's a lot of magic whether you're talking about the arts, whether you're talking about sports, whether you're talking academics, whether you're talking about volunteering and charity giving. You have incredible amounts of students doing some great things down. And actually I'd like to see if I could get you on for a second and just talk about it, it, as president going in, it must be one frustrating when, when you, you have some negative coming out that seems to be the forefront when really there's so much more going on down at Keene State. The one being today that you have some Special Olympians down there doing some basketball. And that's a, that's a if anybody wants to see a, a great game of basketball, go down today to Keene State and, and watch those young Olympians play. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff going on um, that our Keene State students do. Uh, one example is we have over 100 students right now traveling throughout the country on an alternative break, community service.